speed. You appear to have speed? You do. Yay! But you're mostly exhuming dead bodies these yeah. days. Yeah, fictional or otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Anthony here for D News. I got Adam Sessler here with me. Hello. From Rev3 Games, and uh, man, you came you came running over when this story came out. Yeah, it has nothing to do with games <laughs> at all. <laughs> You're like, I can talk about this here. Um, Richard III's remains yes. were exhumed in England by the University of, of Leicester last year in August, and they just proved that it is you know the the one king of England. Yeah who not only never got a proper burial that befits a king, but whose body had never been recovered. And what's cool is they, they proved this through a very intricate and expensive process where first they did like all these genealogical studies and they found the actual two living descendants. Uh, but they also found some stuff that kind of cemented it more. Uh, they found kind of like the fatal blows. They found scoliosis. They right. found... It, it, it all leads into sort of this myth that surrounded Richard III. I mean, he dies at, at, at the end of the 15th century. Uh, that really was considered also the end of the Middle Ages in England. The War of the Roses, you know, the warring houses of, of I believe, the Plantagenets. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to pronounce it. I know it's got a Frenchy sound to it. But it was, you know, the houses of York and Lancaster that had been kind of at odds over who was going to be running England. Yeah. Uh, he was deposed by Henry VII, and that brought in the Tudor dynasty. And which then ushered in Henry VIII, which obviously the great changes that happened in England by getting rid of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. and bringing in the Church of England. So as a result, they kind of um, ran one of the most effective PR campaigns in all of history yeah. by casting him as this absolutely horrible, evil man. Because people think about the Shakespeare play. They think about, exactly. you know, this horrible hunchback guy with like a withered arm. Exactly. And he's super evil, but we don't know how much of that is true. And there are some people... Exactly. And this this study was actually funded by these people, the Ricardians. Yeah, who, who would like to, you know, change the, the image of Richard III. Now, there are some interesting things. that He has this kind of myth mythological um, image of this guy who took the two young children who probably should have been next in line for the throne, mm -hmm. but whose parents marriage was, you know, it was decided as illegitimate at the last minute, and they were brought into the Tower of London, and they were never seen again. So he's considered this yeah. guy who killed two kids and became king. Yet, actually, while he was reigning, he uh, brought in the idea of bail mm -hmm. into the system. He also brought in the kind of like a, a sense of, of the presumption of innocence. These things that you would consider to be highly progressive, especially in the Middle Ages of England. And you know, but the, you know, because of the Shakespeare play, and also uh, Thomas More, who was very close initially with Henry VIII, mm -hmm. uh, wrote such this kind of you know, wonderfully rich, evil portrayal of him that we've really come to see him as like one of the worst of all the royalty that can be found in England. So in the myths, especially in the Shakespeare play, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I love the play because it's such a wonderfully wicked, evil character, mm -hmm. but it always struck me as like one of the less deep plays that he did. Uh, just, just the whole symbolism of the man with a withered arm and a withered back, you know, it's, it's supposed to mean that he has this, this kind of twisted and rotten soul. Mm -hmm. um, but now it turns out that you know, they looked at the skeleton. It does have the evidence of scoliosis that you know, began around the age of 10, that that wasn't myth. Also, the, probably one of the most famous elements of the Richard III play is what happens at the end. And, you know, on the battlefield, as, you know, as, as, as Henry is pretty much ha has him, he's off his horse and he says, my kingdom, my kingdom for a horse. Yeah. Well, what they noticed on the skull of, of the bones, well, there were 10 blows to the head, but two of them were probably the fatal, or, or there were two potentially fatal blows. One of them had to be the, the, the killing blow, but to have actually gotten it on him, his helmet would have been off. Yeah. So not only was he probably not mounted on a horse in reality, he didn't even have his helmet on. He was in a moment of absolute desperation when he looks like he was pummeled to death. And then he has post-mortem wounds while he was naked, strapped to a horse. You stab the buttocks is this yeah. kind of like final humiliation. And then he was just kind of handed over to the Franciscan monks given a burial that didn't even involve a, 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 a coffin. And so it was at this, this small, a, a re relatively small cathedral in the Priory, but then when Henry VIII comes in, obviously all, there, there are no more monks. Yeah. You know, those Catholic churches are, are, are going to be taken yeah. out of it's, England. It's a parking lot now. And now they yeah. lost where the body was and what happened. It's really neat to suddenly have this connection to 
1482. Well, what's funny to me is like now we have all this new physical proof of all these things, but history, like forensic history is good at finding out things like, oh, well, this is how he died. This, These two dinosaurs were actually one dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> we got that wrong. We will never be able to find out really if he was a nice guy, if he was a, he nice was a bad guy. guy. Yeah, how much of this slander know, actually lasted. It's crazy. It is crazy things to think about. There, This is like a whole where if you dive down it today at I know. work or at school, you will be <laughs> in it forever. But we're going to leave you the links so you can dive down that hole because it is really, really awesome. Adam, thank you so much for coming My pleasure. By. You ever need to find more dead bodies associated with Shakespeare? I'm here. That's his thing. But when he's not exhuming dead bodies, he's over at Rev3 Games. So go check that out and subscribe. <laughs>